I'm not afraid to say that I have suffered with anxiety pretty much my entire life. It comes and goes in intense bouts, and then I think I have it under control, and then it comes back again. It's things that we're kind of genetically predisposed to, and anxiety and depression are the real deal. Now, I'm not here to say that I have a perfect solution. I'm not here to say that I have everything that you need to do to fix anxiety and depression, not by any stretch of imagination. But what I am here to say is that there is some really cool evidence that shows that by combining curcumin with specific fats, and by combining turmeric, potentially with the ketogenic diet, you could really be well on your way to improving anxiety and depression from a very clinical standpoint. Now, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say that any of this is going to be concrete, clinical, 100% gonna help you. But when we look at the evidence and we look at how it's worked for me, I'm comfortable sharing it with you and you can take it for what it's worth. So before I dive into the first study, I just ask that you hit that little uh, red subscribe button, then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. All right, let's go ahead and dive in now. 2019 study that was published in Critical Reviews in Food Science and Nutrition was a meta-analysis that took a look at a bunch of different studies on curcumin. And they found, looking at all these studies, they can safely say that curcumin has a very powerful effect at reducing and improving anxiety and depression symptoms. Okay, this is great. And we know that this has an effect, but when we see it in a broad scale like this, it's pretty cool. But how is it doing this? Well, unfortunately, the way it's doing it isn't all that exciting to the layperson. It crushes your inflammation levels in your brain. Okay, so basically we have what's called the NLRP3 inflammasome, we have nuclear factor kappa B, all in which trigger inflammation and keep inflammation high in your brain. So if we can crush that, then obviously we're in a good place. But the unfortunate thing is that that's not that exciting. We hear about inflammation all the time. Okay, so let's take it one step further. So the 2007 study, if we want to go back that far, and look at the journal Ethnopharmacology, and it found that when you consume curcumin, it increases your levels of serotonin and dopamine. So this means from another angle, we're improving your anxiety and depression symptoms. You see, inflammation triggers anxiety and depression. That's no doubt. But what if we could come at it from another angle by improving the neurotransmitters that help us feel good? Serotonin helps us feel good, and dopamine gives us that kind of quick fix satisfaction feeling like when we accomplish something or when we satisfy a craving. Now, we live in a society today where we are constantly having dopamine fixes, a need for dopamine, a need to snack, a need to check our phones, a, a need to just check and control. That is a need for dopamine. So if we can get dopamine being satisfied via curcumin, it could help unhinge us from our cravings and unhinge us from our addictions. So this is powerful stuff, but where does this all come into play with ketosis? Okay, well, let me talk about fats for one second. You've heard that DHA is good, right? Okay, DHA is the omega-3 that uh, helps our brain function better. They always say it's good for brain health, and it is. But one of the reasons that it's good for brain health is because it, uh, once again, crushes inflammation within your brain and provides your brain with a very adequate fuel. But it goes beyond that. Okay, let's jump ship over to ketones for one second. So whether you're doing a ketogenic diet or not, this is probably good information for you because you can still obtain this result by doing periods of fasting even if you're not keto, okay? So there's a double whammy effect on inflammation because ketones when you fast or when you eat keto are going to crush inflammation via another mechanism. So we have curcumin crushing inflammation in the brain via one way and we have ketones crushing inflammation via another pathway, double crushing of inflammation. But quite frankly, that's not the part that I get excited about again. Inflammation is cool and all, but what about genetics. What about getting things done at the DNA level and the RNA level? So the Journal of Hepatology found that chemicals that inhibit histone deacetylase, which I'll explain in a second, improve the function of curcumin. Now we're talking about improving the function of curcumin, not improving the absorption by using black pepper and all this other stuff we hear about. I don't care about the absorption right now. I care about how we improve it working at the genetic level. Okay, so here's what a histone deacetylase inhibitor is. Okay, we have our genetic library that is under lock and key, and it takes a very special form of, I don't know, reaction in our body to open the door to our genetic library and expose us to proper gene expression, to really grow right and really express ourselves the way we need to express them. It turns out that ketones allow that to happen. Okay, they stop what would normally be the security guard for our genetic library. They get rid of the security guards, our genetic library can open up. So therefore, with ketones, we open up the genetic library through fasting, and then we add curcumin into the mix, and then curcumin can have its powerful effect at the genetic level because it's able to enter the library. That's the simplest way to explain it. This is really cutting edge stuff when you combine all this. But once again, in typical Thomas DeLauer fashion, I can't stop there. I want to take it one step further. 
let's take a look at the omega-3s that would normally help your brain. DHA and a little bit of EPA. Those are cool and they're awesome, but let's be realistic. Do you want to eat sardines all the time? Do you want to constantly eat salmon? Some people do, and that's fine. Quite frankly, I would love to, but there's a lot of people that don't. And there's a lot of people that try to get their omega-3s from plant sources, flax, uh, chia, even grass-fed meat, for instance, the omega-3s that you're going to get from grass-fed meat are indirect from plant sources that the cattle ate. So how do we utilize that plant-based omega-3 better? Well, here's the thing. The plant-based omega-3s don't convert well to DHA in the body. Like one to 3% actually get converted into a usable form. So by and large, usually you can say that ALA is a waste, right? You have to consume a lot of it, which is why I recommend consuming a lot of it. But it turns out, according to a really interesting study that was published in 2015 in Biochemica et Biophysica, so it was a European study, it found that curcumin increased the ability to convert ALA into its usable DHA form. So it increased the synthesis enzymes that allow ALA to turn into DHA. This doesn't sound like anything super, super fascinating, but it is. We now have the ability to basically have a conversion process in our body, much like fish do. When fish eat algae, they take that algae and convert it into a usable form. So they take algae, they take an omega-3 from algae, and they turn it into DHA, which we get from fish oil. We're basically turning ourselves into that. We're able to have that same system and process by having ketones from fasting, but also by having curcumin in the mix. Really powerful stuff. So at the end of the day, it's pretty straightforward. It's a great adjunct to a ketogenic diet, a great adjunct to a fasting lifestyle. I do recommend that people consume turmeric and consume curcumin because it really does have a powerful effect. If you guys do wanna check out some of the matcha that I recommend, there's a special link for Yujido Matcha down below, a 180 year old matcha company. They sponsor a lot of videos on my channel and they're super, super awesome, super clean. And they have these little to-go packets that you can just like literally put it in some water, put it in some almond milk, whatever you wanna do and just be on the go and have your matcha packet. So special link down below in the description. But as always, I do appreciate appreciate you guys watching this video and taking the time to better your health. So I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.